Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Strong Draws. My name is Brett Strong, and I am today I am coloring the Zordon and Beltar poster that I did in my last video. Now, if you didn't see my last videos and don't know what Zordon of Eltar is, it's a fan film uh, made by Cisco Davis Jr. about kind of the origins of Zordon. Uh, I talked a little bit more about that in the last video, so you can go check that out there. Or, and I'll also leave the link uh, to the video or to the movie in the description below. So, um, what you're seeing me do here is what's called flatting. It's just picking basically your neutral colors and uh, of what you know whatever it may be and just kind of laying it in there to get the separations done um, I don't think you'll see too many of these videos um, I don't do a whole lot of coloring mainly because I'm I, I just don't feel I'm that good at it but when I have to I, I will do it and again in the last video um, if you go back and if you haven't seen that one you can go back and see I put this blue color in there that's kind of bluish gray and the reason for that was is it it it, it made my coloring easier because the shadows are pretty much done uh, you, you you bring the file in you set the line art to multiply and then as you paint under it it keeps the blues and it just makes the color you know makes your shadows there already for you so basically all I have to do is go in and paint the highlights um, paint, color, whatever. And so that's kind of what you're seeing me do here right now is just, like I said, just laying in flats, choosing the colors I want. And the great thing about digital coloring is just because you choose a color, it doesn't have to stay that color. It's very easily adjusted to suit, excuse me, to suit your means. So again, it's not something I do very often, so I don't know how many coloring videos there are going to be. But when I do have to color something, I kind of I've drifted towards this method, which is the kind of the lasso. I guess you call it. I think some people call it a cut and something or another. I don't really remember what anybody else calls it. I've just always called it the lasso method, which I fought doing for a really long time. I just always wanted to. I figured you just go in there and paint like you would paint anything else. Why would you need a lasso tool? And then I learned about airbrushing and templates and all that good stuff. So, And this is just a quicker, uh, more efficient way to get things done, I guess. So what I've done is I, all I do is I got a standard Photoshop uh, airbrush, a soft-edged airbrush, which has, uh, I believe it's called Transfer in the new Photoshop, the CC version. Uh, but I think it's other dynamics in any version before so depending on what version you're using you turn that on um, I turn the sh shape dynamics off smoothing on and then I turn noise on as well because as you can see it, does, it gives you a little, a little bit of a grain to it it doesn't make it look so porcelain it look you know look like a porcelain doll or something it gives a little bit of grit not a whole lot I mean you can adjust it to your liking if that's something you're into but it gives it a little bit more natural feel, I think. It doesn't make it look like it's made of plastic or glass. And so all I do is since I did so much line work or blacks in here, it makes it pretty easy. You just go in. Again, you just kind of choose cool shapes and just choose that with your lasso. And then with your brush, just kind of... I always... What I find is if I pull a, from the center, I'll line up the edge of the, or the center of the brush with the edge of whatever selection I'm making and just kind of pull towards the light source kind of gives me the effect I'm looking for. Also I've got the uh, flow and the opacity turned down I think around thir the, the, the opacity usually in the 30s the flow usually around in the 40s there's no exact number um, just in that general range anywhere from the 30s to 40s uh, depending on the piece and kind of the results I mean it seems like it works a little different each time you use it so you just kind of have to adjust and and do what works best for you or for the particular piece so again I'm not the best colorist I don't really do anything real crazy in here um, but again 
it's something when I have to do it, I do it. It just kind of works. But you can see even like coming up when I'm doing the shield here, like the 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 even though it's shadowed, I put a little bit of light in there just with that blue on top of it just looks real cool. And it was real simple to do. It looks much more difficult than it actually turns out to be. So yeah, working on the sword. Um, I, I don't think I've mentioned before, but I know these videos go pretty quick. Um, I'm just trying to show the process. I think just the coloring alone took me a little over an hour, hour and a half. But, <clears throat> excuse me, if you guys have any questions, you know, kind of on what I'm doing, what my settings are, or even requests for characters that you want to see me draw, or, you know, anything of that nature, feel free to put it in the comments. Um, again, questions, just drop it down in there. I'll answer to the best of my ability. If you're a colorist out there, you have questions, or I, I'll try to do my best. Again, I, I don't color a whole lot again, like I was saying, so I'll, I'll try to help you as best I can. Like, if you look here, I'm really struggling with Rita's face. I'm going to try it two or three times before I get it right, I think. But I made the, I, I kept trying the same thing over and over, and it just wasn't working. And so then I did the crazy thing. I looked up reference, and this is what, and then I finally got to something I like. Now, again, the, another cool thing about working like with digital colors is like right now I have my brush settings up in the top corner, kind of like your uh, layers. You have a drop down menu you can pick pretty much the same things multiply, uh, screen, hard light, pin light. There's a whole bunch up there. Generally, I just found working in a, with the brush on normal and just choosing colors. I get kind of the result I want, but like with the hair here, I believe I turned the brush to hard light, and it, and I did it with the highlights on her face. It just gives you kind of a like a almost a glow without really having to change colors too much. Just a really cool effect. Um, I recommend going through there, trying those. Screen works really good, um, usually for your highlights. Um, Again, hard light will give you kind of a glow. You got your, uh, I think I use darkened color quite a bit. But lately I've just been choosing my colors and my palette from my palettes and just kind of going from there to get what I want. Now with the rocks, the rocks are always kind of fun because it's kind of like playing that game when, I don't know, I still do it, but when you're a kid, it's like looking at the clouds and seeing what, you know, I see, I, you know, I see a rabbit in the clouds. You know, we try to pick out shapes or stuff. That's kind of what how you how I paint rocks is. I take the shape and just see what can I find that fits in there, where the shapes are. So again, it's pretty all pretty straightforward here. I'm adding um, an ambient light. I chose green as the background color, and mainly because I like green and Rita's the whole color scheme was green so she's kind of imposing on him and well the entire universe pretty much so everything got to be a kind of a greenish color in the beginning and just adding bounce lights and highlight or uh, ambient lights rim lights to it in this green color so again as I was talking about in my last video at the moment I am working on a uh, Power Rangers fan comic it's going to be eight pages long when it's all done. It's going to be fully colored. And um, I'm going to throw it up for free on my Facebook page so you can go follow me there if you're interested. And to keep up to date on that, I will be giving away free art for that stuff. Um, either from the book. I haven't really decided what the prize is going to be. I might just do the cover image or something, just prints, where I'll number and sign, you know, sign them and send them off to you guys, whoever you know whoever's interested in that so again kind of close to the end of the video kind of getting all her uh, ambient light put into but again yeah you'll be able to find the full res version of this picture on my Facebook and deviant page again which links are in the bottom so yeah again it's it, it's all pretty straightforward as far as coloring goes again I'm not I, I don't really I, I kind of know what I'm, I'm I know what I'm doing enough to pull off things when I need it to work 
other than that, I'm not, you know, there's much better colors. There's a, a K. Michael Russell. If you have any real desire to learn comic book coloring, go check out his channel. I'll leave that in the description below, too. But here we're going to do the planets in the background, and then we're pretty much done. What you're going to see me do at the end is add a hue adjustment um, layer on top of everything. And, it's, and what you can do with that is adjust. Kind of, kind of pretty much what it says. You can adjust the hue and saturation, and you'll see me do that, and that's kind of how I get the final color scheme of the whole thing. But again, guys, if you have any questions, um, requests, feel free to leave them in the in the comments below. I know I keep saying that. I just again, I don't really know much else to say about coloring. Um, just working on the planets here, adding just text, you know, just these weird shapes to look like possible land masses and clouds and stuff over top and adding texture to their moons a little bit so again go check out my fan page or my art page on facebook if you're interested in the, the mini comic i'm working on and um check me out on deviant follow me on twitter um there there will be updates as far as the contest and the comic book coming up as long as, as well as updates to my future projects that are go, that I got in the works right now. So, thanks for watching, guys. We're gonna get one more final image here. Again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.